So anyway, they, if they don't have a doctor on staff, not professionally licensed, it could be a problem. Telecom investigators. I mean, they, they are third party typically because they're, they're specialized. They may move from one area to another depending on who's hiring them. You got for, forensic photographers. I mean, a bridge falls down, they go take a picture, and then they come back and try to use it in court. They don't have a professional license. There's no, I'm a professional forensics photographer. So at least from that standpoint, there may be some problems. Uh, and then uh, one of the senators or something sent me this list, uh, repo men, bondsmen, bounty hunters. They actually have a separate license for bondsmen and bounty hunters, but I don't believe it's a professional license. It's a one-day class. You get this little certification. So there may be some other things. I don't know about repo men. That one's, that one's a little touchy. But at least from that standpoint, there are others that can be confused. And if you have this big a gray area and no one can decide, I call that a big problem. So... So this is what we try to do about it. Over the next year, a bunch of us who are leaders in the field, some people from large companies that I, you guys would know if I named them, basically we created this group that's called Digital Work Forensics Working Group. And we got the senator who originally submitted the bill for the PI board to say that he would work with us, that he would work with us instead of the PI board, and he would submit a law on behalf of us if we wrote one to either create or try to do something maybe with a new board or to submit a law that basically excluded us or whatever we wanted to try to write. If it was, if it was feasible and logical, he would submit it. So then the day that you had to submit these things, all of a sudden, even though we wrote a bill, we sent it to him, it was all confirmed. He says, I got it. We're good to go. He submitted the PI bill again the next day, the original one with some changes to it that now actually declared that we were digital forensics people were now involved. So, so basically, I'm like, what the heck happened here? How did he just all of a sudden stab us in the back, turn around? You waited a year and delayed us by a year. So I sent this to one of the House GOPs who was kind of a friend of mine who's actually talked to me several times about this issue. He says, I spoke to Aubrey Milanes, a lobbyist for the private detectives tonight, and told him I was interested in this issue and suggested that we have a meeting of all parties to, to talk about this bill, basically, and he agreed. And this is the first time I had seen this guy's name. So I'm like, you know, I'm curious about this Aubrey Villanes guy, because is, is he related to John Villanes, the president of the private investigation board? Hmm. Bam, they are brothers. So I guess not. I'm learning a lot about the political system as we go. Because let's face it, you know, as computer guys, most of us, what's that? That's a felony. So as a computer guy, most of us just go, I don't really care what they pass as far as the law. We work the system. We figure out a way around it. We do what we got to do. Well, now this is a prime example of us not being able to. There you go. It is on the DVD by the CD that you got from DEF CON as well. So it's on there. I've published this. So, and on many boards. Yes, there you go. So, but, you know, this bothered me quite a bit. And, you know, is it illegal? Probably not. I mean, he's a lawyer and he was hired by the private investigators board. But here he is trying to pass laws and get senators and stuff to agree with him to, for, to benefit his brother directly. So, and help his businesses. That seems a little, you know, a conflict of interest to me, but I don't know. So anyway, this was the new bill that was submitted. It's called House Bill 504. This has been what was submitted the last two years. It did die on the vine this last time. No one, uh, they didn't vote on it or do anything. I can tell you it's going to come back. I know it's going to come back, especially now that Michigan has passed this law, because what happens is the states go, hey, you know, these guys passed the law, and uh, it's also a felony in, in Texas, but uh, there's a couple of states. South Carolina. But uh, there's some problems there, obviously, with uh, if they've passed a law, now you've got to start, you know, all the other people are starting to say, well, we're applying to the National Board. We're doing what they're supposed to do. Let's go do the same thing. They did it. We need to do it. So that's what's happening here is basically they submitted this House Bill 504 for the last two years, and it basically says that it's uh, anybody who's you know, information including but not limited to any type of digital or electronics information. So at this point in time now, they're not even just saying computer forensics. Now they're saying anything. So that does include pen testing and other stuff like that. Or, uh, you know, who knows, uh, maybe, you know, check 21 or something like that, because now it's all digital. I mean, there's a number of things now where things are going to be applied because they're digital. So we may start having some problems there. 
Yeah, I mean, it could be anything that's used for a legal purpose, obviously. There's a lot more to this, so you need to look up House Bill 504 and read it. Uh, and it didn't pass, so they're going to modify it and then resubmit it again. But, uh, but at least from this standpoint, yes, it could be anything that has to do with digital or electronic information that's for the other three categories, going to be used in a court or blah, blah, blah. So, so on and so on. So, and this time, they did specifically exclude professional practices. So anybody else who has a license in some other field that is a professional license by the board, they basically nullified that issue. They eliminated corporations and things like that. So basically now, they've limited it to the scope of just third parties. So now it's the companies who are reselling their skills to someone else. Those are the only ones now that are in, in trouble, according to the new definitions. So this is... Uh, I pulled this from, and the, the website is over here in the corner, investigation, uh, investigation.com. This is a, a really good site. They have a whole map up of letters. This, this uh, guy, Mark Kessler, basically has sent uh, a letter to all the states asking them whether or not computer forensics people have to be private investigators. And this is just one clip from the one from Georgia. And so even though technically, like I said, they've only changed the word from or tried to change it from a misdemeanor to felony, they're stating right here clearly that the board does require computer forensics firms to be tech and technicians to be licensed to perform their duties to the public, blah, blah, blah. So this is like your written information for that. And there's other states up there on that list. If you go to that, they have like a map and a, a whole bunch of letters. And you can go read what they say. Keep in mind, some of them may be outdated now because they may have changed since the letter was submitted to them or written back to them because it takes the state like a year to write a letter. So, <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the various states, some of the other states I know of things that are going on. So uh, South Carolina says it requires a license and will hunt you down. I've actually heard something along the lines of the AG has basically said, if we ship evidence out of here and it goes someplace else and you investigate it, even if it's in your own state, that we're going to hunt you down. So that's, um, that's not a quote, so you guys have to hunt that down on your own if you want to find out what that is. So I'm not saying that it's 100% accurate from that standpoint. That's just one that I have heard through the grapevine. So you can follow up with that. Then you've got a couple other things like Alabama, Alaska, Missouri. They don't have a state PI licensing board, but they have cities that have the requirement. So now if you're going to get a license, you have to pay attention to what city you're in. Maybe in one city you don't have to have one, and in another city you do. So, and if there's two cities that require them, you've got to get two different licenses. That could be a big problem, especially in something as diverse as something like Alaska. I mean, how many, you know, how many different cities are going to go to to work in to, you know, where's your work going to come from as a third party? Then you have uh, South Dakota has no PI license but has a business license. I mean, this is how screwed up some things are. I mean, you know, from one state to another, you have no idea what you're dealing with. So if you're going to be dealing with digital stuff, you may be crossing state boundaries in most cases because who knows where it comes from. And if you're crossing a state boundary, now you've got to comply with that state, even if it's sometimes just a connection out of that state. So Washington State says if you interview people. They don't clarify what interview means, but if you interview somebody, you have to be a PI. So what does that mean? Uh, interview, interrogate. In most cases, it just means you talk to somebody. So client calls you and says, uh, my son's missing. And can you help? And you go over and look at their computer, and you take $10. So now you've interviewed them, and now you have to be a PI. But if a lawyer hired you, and he talked to the client and never talked to you, and gave you the computer and you investigated it, then you're probably okay. Again, not your lawyer. So, so here's some new developments. In North Carolina recently, some of you may have read about this thing because it was widely published that there was a big problem going on in North Carolina, and I was aware of every step of the way here. Um, and they had this meeting that basically there was this whole thing that somebody says, okay, we, we all sat down and we all talked to everybody, and the state now has agreed that we all need a separate license, that computer forensics is different. And to me, I'm looking at this going, something doesn't make sense here. You know, who did they sit down with? It turns out they sat down with the PI board. The PI board is the same people that they sat down with to say, oh, we, now we need a separate license. 